So there's our user defined type there again, um, just with an ID and name. And um, in this function here, we're calling a, uh, another function called retrieve user asking for Sally. And then we're checking if there's an error. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, and then we're displaying um, this value, okay? Now, let's look at retrieve user for a second. One of the coolest things I thought, uh, one of the things I thought was very cool about Go when I first saw it was this idea that it can, you can return multiple values out of a function. And you're not limited to just one or even two. You can have 10 if you want it. However, however, if you look in the standard library, I'd say that there's maybe less than 12 functions that return more than two values. There are some that return three. I've never ever seen anything return more than three. And anytime I even get to three, um, I start to question what I'm doing. But there are situations where you might be returning multiple values uh, up to three because there's a couple of integer values or something you want to return out. But the real beauty of this is your ability to return an error value and other state at the same time. Which when I was in C++ and C Sharp, uh, and you can only return that one value, a lot of times I was returning an integer out and having to use the concept of references to move data in and out of a function. This is just so much more readable. So error is always going to be the last value if there's an error that's going to be returned out of a function. And so what you see here is this function takes in a string, returns a pointer to a user, uh, and an error. Now, a couple other things I want to share with you um, in terms of readability in Go. Don't get into this idea that a function has a single entry point, so it should have a single exit point. We're not going to do that. It makes code very hard to read. Also, anytime I see an else clause, the code review is going to stop, and I'm going to do everything I can to get rid of it. I want you to follow this pattern to the extent that you can. We want to use the column, this like column here is the happy path. And we want to use if statements to the extent that we can for negative path. And we want to return out of a function as soon as we need to if there are issues. And so my eyes can follow down this vertical path here and know everything that's going to be happening if life is good. And the else clause disrupts that visualization. And so we really want to get rid of else clauses. And by the way, Go has something called a naked switch. And it really does also help with getting rid of else clauses. So what the naked switch does is it lets you do Boolean logic at a case statement. So if you feel like, no, Bill, I have this type of if-else situation, I do, I'm going to say, well, can the switch case prevent us from using else? and do that. There are times where it's this, else, that, one-liners, it is what it is, there's exceptions. But I want you to be aware of the naked switch because there's a good chance I'm going to be asking you to use that instead of the else clause. And I'm going to ask you to have these multiple returns to get out of town once there's a problem. Also, an idiom we use in Go. Um, if the value on the return is an error, then we're going to pass that error variable and then we're going to use the zero value literal for the other type. Always use the little, uh, zero value literal for all other parameters coming out of that function on the return. So here we want to pass error. We use nil, which is the zero value for a pointer. Here we want to pass um, user. Ideally, here we're passing error. This to me is a code smell. I would almost rather you do an if statement here and be literal on those returns. Same thing here, it's a literal for the error and that's what we're responding. This is going to make your code so much easier to read because people can look on any return, they can look on any return and they would know what's going on. In this particular case, I would probably ask you to do this in this code literal value error because when my eye sees nil 
in that second position, I know immediately that we're talking about the success. There's no error. It's a huge read readability marker. When the error variable is there, your brain's going, well, what is error? What's going on? Plus, you're returning an error and another value. That's, that's honestly um, not really good. And so from a code readability standpoint, I'm looking for these things as well, using those literal values on the return for those things that are not there. It's going to help the code so much in terms of, of readability. Now, um, we come back to this code here. We got that username, and if there was an error, then we're going to return the zero value and the error itself. I want you to notice this error not equals nil. Um, Later on when we get into some interface mechanics, I'll come back and explain the syntax, okay? But this error type is a built-in type and it's an interface type. And for me to get into it now would, would not work. So just, just assume right now that error not equal nil means that there's no error right now related to the call. I will teach you the mechanics before the end of the week, all right? And you can see what's going on. Now, one thing I do want to show you is this. And um, this is really cool. That short variable declaration oper operator, remember, declares and initializes. And one of the things we have in Go is the ability to do these variable declarations at this extra level of scope. So in this particular case, this error variable, it is being declared inside the if and only exists inside the if. And it really helps um, with shadowing issues. Um, and it helps you be able to reuse like an ERR variable. I'm going to show you some other things. Now, since we don't use else clauses, OK, this wouldn't matter, right? But this ERR would also be associated with the if in this case. Um, this also applies to for loops. It applies to switch statements. It applies to anything you're doing. If you use that short variable declaration operator in the scope of a statement, that variable is going to be locally um, declared or scoped to that. Um, this isn't necessarily um, unique to Go, I guess, but I need you to be aware of that. Now, um, we can come back here again and, and see what we're doing. So in the case where the only thing that's coming back is an error, you're going to see a lot of Go developers do this. And believe it or not, Go has semicolons. The thing is, is that the compiler is very strict on how to format code, which gives the compiler the ability to stick the semicolons in for you. And uh, after you've worked with Go for like three or four months and try to write a little JavaScript, you realize how nice it is not to have to put a semicolon in. And you realize all of the mistakes that you're making with semicolons um, because you're forced to put them in where a lot of these bugs go away and go. I was working with my son on some JavaScript code one day, and we did this by accident, and the code wasn't working. I must have lost 20 minutes on it. And uh, it's just something that you can't, that will never happen in Go. Go, the compiler would catch it because the code's not formatted right. So it's super interesting stuff. Um, so you'll see me do this a lot put that if or that error variable inside the if when I can. When you can't because you need that other value outside the scope of the if, then you'll see this happening. Uh, you'll see it on two lines.